Hello everybody! Let's take a look at the Elrond IDE, which we built to assist you in developing smart contracts. We will go over the installation of the Elrond IDE itself, then we will create a new contract from a template, then build it, run tests on it, and deploy it on a local testnet. Let's get going! First, make sure you have Visual Studio Code installed, following the appropriate steps of your, for your operating system, as these may vary. Now we open Visual Studio Code, and after opening it, we have to open an, a folder. This is required before doing anything else. It will serve as our current workspace. I will now open a new, a new folder I've made called Elrond. There you go. Next, we will install the Elrond IDE extension. For this, we go to the Extensions activity on the activity bar on the left. Search here for Elrond. Good, this is the Elrond IDE extension. We click on install. We give it a little bit of time to work in the background. Once it's done, we return to the Explorer. And now we have to set up our workspace. For that, we press Control shift p to open the Visual Studio commands and type in Elrond Setup Workspace. There it is. We press Enter. And now we will have a series of prompts asking us to allow the extension to modify our current workspace. We click on Yes. Also, uh, the Elrond IDE will want to install EarthPy, its backend. Click on Yes again. Part of the setup of the workspace is that we have to allow also some environment variables to be adjusted. We allow it. Now, this step, okay, Erdbuy has been installed, yes. We will close all Visual Studio Code terminals as indicated. Good. So we close this terminal. Now, it's important to note that this setup needs to be done only once per workspace, not per individual project. And only the first workspace will take a little longer to set up, but all subsequent workspaces will go much faster. Also, observe that a few files and a folder have been added to our work workspace. Now, let's start and create a new smart contract from a template. Observe that we now have a new activity called the Elrond Workspace Explorer. We click on it and we are interested in this bottom pane called Templates, which is currently empty, but if we click on Refresh here, it will be populated with a list of templates. There it is. We select the crowdfunding template and click on New Contract. Now we give a new name for our contract. Let's call it My Crowdfunding. There it is. And now, again, the IDE asks us for permission to modify the workspace. We allow it. And because the crowdfunding smart contract is a Rust smart contract, the IDE will want to install the Rust toolchain for it. Now, we allow it. Also, note that this toolchain is completely separate from any toolchains that you may have installed on your computer. So if you already have the Rust toolchain with its compiler and package manager, it will not be affected. Rust has been installed. We click OK. Now observe that my crowdfunding, the contract, has been created. Let's see what's inside. So we have, of course, this main source folder. Inside it, there is a file the librs file, this is the primary, this is the main code of the contract. This is all there is, just Rust code. We will come to it a little later, but we will not go into details right now about it. Also note, there is a Mantos folder which contains, these are, these are test scenarios. Now, Mantos is our smart contract testing framework. It's a declarative testing framework where scenarios are written in JSON. We will also use it in a moment. Now, let's build a smart this smart contract. 
Now, the, um, the contracts for the Eldron network must be compiled to WASM. We've prepared everything in the IDE for you to do that with ease. So if you right click on the folder on my, crowd, my crowdfunding folder, there is an option here to build the contract. If you click on it, there will a compiler will start. So the Rust compiler will start and build the whole project. This will take a little while because it is the first time we're running it. Now the dependencies must also be downloaded and compiled. Of course, subsequent builds will take much less time. The contract has been built. We can now see there's an output folder here containing the WASM file. So there, here it is, my crowdfunding.wasm. Building the contract is required, is a required step before doing anything with it, like running Mandos tests. But let, so now that we've built it, let's do just that. Let's run the Mandos tests, the three scenarios we've just seen. But first, there will be another dependency that has to be installed just this first time. This is the Arwin Tools package, the dependency group, which contains all, the, all that Mandos needs to run tests on the contract. Now, the installation has completed. Arwin Tools has been installed. And now Mandos has run the tests. All three scenarios have passed. Good. Now that, uh, now that we've built the smart contract and tested it, we can now run it on a, we can now deploy it on a local testnet. We can start a testnet for it. Here it is. There is a, there is a testnet.toml file here. It's currently empty, which means that the testnet, any testnet we will start, will use default settings. You may add later settings here for your testnet. And it's also important to know that each smart contract can have its own configuration for a testnet. Now, this testnet.toml file is under the microfunding folder. We right click on it and we start a fresh testnet. Now, because the Elrond nodes, which will be part of the testnet, are written in Go, we will need to install Golang, the Golang toolchain. We click on Yes. In other words, what happens now is that the source code for the Elron nodes will be downloaded and built. And there it is, the process has started. This only needs to be done once, again. The seed node has started building, of course, and soon we'll see the nodes as well. Mm -hmm. These are the nodes. DVM is being built. And the proxy. Now the build process has completed, and now the testnet has started. It's already it's already up and running. See, there's a first block being actually this a second block being uh, being built, the third and so on. This indicates to us that the network, the testnet, is working in the background. Now, the local testnet is small and efficient, and it uses very little resources. You can actually leave it running indefinitely as you work. Now that we have a testnet to deploy our contract on, let's deploy the contract. For that, we will use snippets. Snippets are um, pre-built steps which you can run to uh, interact with a smart contract. In this case, we will, we will run the deploy simulate step, which will do what its name says. We will simulate its deployment on the testnet. So for that, we right click on this file on snippets.sh. We click on run contract snippet, deploy simulate. It will run this erdpy command. 
let's see its output. So deployment return code is OK. This means that if we would have deployed this contract in for real, it would have succeeded. This was just a simulation. Now let's deploy it for real. We run the con a contract snippet called deploy this one. Good. This our this is our smart contract address. Aired by the backend of the IDE will store this address, so you don't have to copy it anywhere else. It will know it. So for all subsequent snippets, it will be available. Now that deployment has completed, let's check it. Let's see if it went well. We run a new contract snippet. The check deployment. Good. We we inspect the code hash. Here. The code hash is, of course, the, ho the hash of the WASM bytecode that has been stored on the blockchain of the local testnet. This must not be an empty value. It isn't empty. This means that the smart contract has been deployed successfully. Now, another th thing we can do now is to interact with the contract that's been deployed. So we have these three snippets, status, current funds, and send funds. So we can we can now let's just run the status snippet. It will tell us the following. It will tell us okay, the result was the number zero. This is what the smart contract has replied to uh, with when we asked it's for its status. Now to understand what this means, this zero, we go back to the source code of the smart contract here. We scroll down where we have the statuses. Now, zero means our crowdfunding campaign is currently being funded. It is ongoing. This means it can receive funds. And we also have a, a send funds snippet prepared. So let's do just that. We will send funds from a test wallet called Alice. This is, this is uh, bundled with the testnet and it will send three tokens to the smart contract. Let's run this snippet. Send funds. There it is. Now, it has uh, the funds have been sent. Let's see if they arrived. We have For that, we have the current funds snippet. Let's run it and see what it tells us. Yes, so the smart contract has reported that three tokens have arrived at it and it's currently holding them. So, once we're done, we can close the testnet because it can also be resumed from the last time it's been closed and all the smart contracts you've deployed will still be there. The state persists. Let's close it. For that, we right-click on the testnet.toml file and click on Stop Testnet. Now, if, uh, if we were to click on Start Fresh Testnet, this means that the current testnet stopped or, or ongoing will be erased and all the state it held with it. Now, we've just stopped the current one. It can be resumed later. Now, feel free to explore the, both the snippets and the code of the smart contract to learn more. Uh, these, uh, the template and the snippets are an excellent place to start learning. Moreover, the snippets will show you how to uh, how to use Erdpy for the for uh, for start. Erdpy is the backend of the IDE and it is the command line tool with which you can do a lot on the blockchain on the Eldron network. It contains commands for almost anything you can think of. You can find more information at docs.elrond.com. Now, stay tuned for more videos from Elrond because there will be more coming. Goodbye.